Welcome to the University of North Carolina at Greensboro Special Collections and University Archives located in Jackson Library. I'm Scott Henshaw and we're here today to look at an exhibit highlighting some aspects of one of our favorite manuscript collections, the Lois Linsky Papers. Lois Linsky was an award-winning author of children's books, most well known for her books based on children living in different regions of the United States. This exhibit titled Lois Linsky, Art, Illustration, Literature, and Research, examines her work through these four themes to gain a better understanding of areas that are familiar to readers of her books, as well as to explore some areas which are not so well known. Lois Linsky is most well known as an author of children's books, and because of that our first theme is literature. We featured just a few of Lois's over 100 titles here, including books from her historical novel series about children living in America's past, as well as books from her American Regional and Roundabout America series, which focus on contemporary children from different regions around the United States. Also included in this case are a few of her award-winning books, most notably Strawberry Girl, which won the Newbery Medal for the Most Distinguished Contribution to American Literature for Children in 1946. Lois got an early start in illustration. She illustrated her college yearbook her senior year. When she moved to New York to attend art school, she paid the bills in part through her illustration work with greeting cards, fashion drawings, and cut-out doll books for children. She also attended art school in London, and while there she began illustrating books for other authors. She illustrated a diverse array of subjects from books about giants to works about medieval times, Persia, and ancient Greece. This illustration work led directly to her career as an author, and her publisher in England prompted her to write her first book, Skipping Village, published in 1927. It sounds incredible to anyone who knows Lois as a successful children's book author, but she never intended to be an author. She had always planned to be an artist. And she had some real success and notoriety in that field apart from her book arts. Lois exhibited and sold her paintings and prints at shows in such places as Chicago, New York, and Detroit. She held two one-man shows of her art in New York in 1927 and 1932. Lois also had her print work published alongside a prominent printmaker, Rockwell Kent, in 1927. Lois was a successful artist. But what kind of artist was she? In the second art case, we compare some of Lois's art with two prominent artists of the American Regionalist School of Art. The Regionalist School was a reaction against French-inspired modernist styles such as Cubism and preferred a focus on American subjects, faithful representation, emphasis on uniqueness of locale, and meaningfulness for the spectator. Her landscapes compare favorably with Grant Wood's style and her portraits compare favorably with Thomas Hart Benton's. In the final two cases, we focus on the theme of research. Lois was meticulous in research for her books, but she approached research for her historical novels and her regional books differently. In the first case, we explore the research method Lois employed for her historical novels. She drew much of her background material and knowledge for these books about children living in America's past from the material culture of the period, which she collected herself. Here we see children's books, letters, autograph books, awards of merit, diaries, and account books dating from the early 1800s to about 1850. From these materials, Lois learned the intricate details that would bring her historical novels to life for her readers. In the second case, we explore what Lois referred to as real-life research. Lois visited culturally diverse areas of the United States on family trips and spent extended time with the people in these areas. She interviewed them, documented the details of their environments, houses, clothing, and other aspects of their lives, and even joined in the daily chores and jobs from time to time. She was an enthusiastic participant observer whose research at times paralleled the work in the field of ethnography. Here we see her notebooks of sketches and notes as well as photographs she took to document her subjects. Her commitment to be true to the people she met is shown through her meticulous attention to detail and is a primary reason why her regional books have been so well received and enjoyed. 
We hope you enjoyed this brief look at just a portion of one of our many excellent collections here at UNCG Special Collections and University Archives.